Hello, Arena here, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of media I grew up, which was Soviet media. Um, despite spending most of my life in the U.S., most of the media I consumed was actually Soviet media, um, and this was because my mother was born in the Soviet Union, and she shared with us the types of media that she grew up on. So, let's talk about that. Now, it's very interesting to compare my childhood to those who grew up in the U.S. While others were watching Cartoon Network, I was watching Visiole Garusiel. I was that kid that hasn't seen or read Harry Potter or Star Wars, and yet that didn't make my childhood any less rich. I just watched Electronic or Gostya iz Budushiva instead. What I appreciate about Soviet art is its accessibility. All of the media I am going to talk about today is available for free on YouTube and sometimes even with English subtitles. And that's how I was able to share some of my favorite childhood pieces with friends here in the U.S. And I've got to say, the Soviet cartoons all have such unique styles. And that's not to say that Western animation doesn't. Um, but there was a lot of puppetry, clay animation, clay stop motion animation, and of course, the beautiful hand-drawn animation. Now, that isn't to say that my experience with the love for Soviet media is in any way unique to the love that people in the West have for the media that they grew up with. And just as easily as I spoke of the unique, beautiful animation in Soviet media, people can say about Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. Now, my point isn't to place Soviet media above Western media. I simply want to introduce it to you, and perhaps you may find some value in it, even if it's just as pieces of history. Now, let me touch a little bit on Soviet humor, and I will compare Soviet humor in the 80s to what I noticed of uh, Western or American humor in the 80s. Now, Soviet humor can be a bit, I would say, emotionally crude, but never sexually crude. And what I notice is that the situational humor of Soviet media isn't always in interpreted as being humorous by a Western audience. Let me give you an example of that. Now, imagine a scene where a mother has just learned that she is being cheated on and is now wailing in pain. What kind of movie or genre does that evoke in your thoughts? Now, what I am describing is a hilarious, iconically funny scene from the comedy Lyubov i Golovi, which is on YouTube with decent English subtitles. <laughs> And what I've noticed is that every single English speaker that I've shown that movie to fails to laugh at that scene. Now, of course, they're probably missing the rural dialect and slang with which the character speaks and how deeply stereotypical and familiar she feels to those in the post-Soviet diaspora. Now, another thing that I appreciate about Soviet media is its lack of sexualization of women. Editing Arena here, and to be fair, I'm not sure if this is necessarily a Soviet versus Western thing, or maybe an older media compared to modern media thing. Although, I will say that a scene like the scene from Baywatch with Pamela Anderson would probably not be shown or shot in the Soviet Union, although scenes with tasteful nudity and sexuality certainly would be. Uh, perhaps it is the framing of the woman in question as subject versus object um, is in a bit of a different proportion in Soviet media compared to American media, even of that time. 
But I'd be interested to know what you guys think. This is just something that I've noticed and something that I've heard people express their feelings about in regards to Western media. And I haven't necessarily noticed the same kinds of attitudes in regards to Soviet media. Now, modern Russian media, yes, I have, you know, heard of some people analyzing it in the way that it objectifies women. But yeah, I'd be interested to know what you guys think, especially if you grew up on Western media in the 70s and 80s. What, what did you think? And if you also grew up on Soviet media, I'd love to know what you your thoughts are about it versus me um being born after the fall of the soviet union and kind of consuming that soviet media post its existence yeah women who were not the paragon of attractiveness were allowed to be seen women whose primary concern was not their sex appeal or appearance now, do not mistake this for there not being an acknowledgement of beauty. Beauty was certainly acknowledged. It was not pedestaled. It just simply was. The messaging that I got, beauty was not the primary way for women to gain value. And I do somewhat credit um, growing up with such body neutral media with the lack of insecurities that I ended up growing up with, which based on the kinds of content that I am seeing is not always the case for women and girls that grow up in the U.S. And again, this might be a more so modern issue. Um, I did speak with my mom and she said that she remembered growing up in the Soviet Union and then later as an adult in Russia once the supermodel craze began in the 90s is when she really noticed people developing these complexes around their appearance. Now, I would argue, though, that even in older American media, it seems that the messaging is that the worst thing a woman could be is not beautiful, which I do think is a bit of a cultural difference there. And some of the most beloved and famous Soviet actresses were not lauded for their beauty, but rather their talent and charisma that they brought on screen. And the fact that I dare observe the fact that these famous actresses in the Soviet times were not famous for their beauty may be taken with some offense by people who grew up in a culture that told them that beauty is where women draw their value from. And I can probably rant for hours about that. But if you feel yourself needing to defend a woman's beauty, even if she is not beautiful, I do invite you to ask why that is. Why is it so terrible for a woman to not be beautiful? Why can't a woman just be? Now, I might have given the impression earlier that while I can rant about this for hours, that I wasn't going to do so in this video, but... I just wanted to jump in and offer a few more cents to my little coin pile over there. And it feels to me that there's this impression that everyone must be beautiful, or rather that you must be beautiful to be happy, and therefore you must pursue being beautiful in order to achieve joy in your life. Um, which is really interesting to me. We can acknowledge whether someone is tall or short, brunette, blonde, redhead, uh, brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. We can acknowledge whether someone can carry a tune or not carry a tune. We can acknowledge whether somebody has rhythm or no rhythm. We can acknowledge whether somebody can dance or not. We can acknowledge whether somebody has musical talent. We can acknowledge whether somebody has athletic ability, whether they can lift a big weight or not lift a big weight. And yet people are obsessed with beauty and with telling everybody that they are beautiful. But that just defeats the point of beauty. Beauty is beauty because it's so rare. And guess what? The rest of us average fucks are out here having beautiful love lives, having amazing families, and leading joyful lives. So I do 
kind of want to chew on that a little bit. What is it in in the culture that is making people believe that they must be beautiful to find joy in their lives? Now, all this is not to say that insecurity surrounding appearance was not a thing in the Soviet Union or even a theme or even or not a theme in Soviet media. We are all human after all. I just notice a lot more of a focus on the value of attractiveness in American media, even in older American media. Now, let me list off five of some of my favorites from Soviet media, and this is not even a quarter of it. Um, so I will definitely be making a follow-up to this video if you guys like. Um, but let's begin, starting out with The Caliph Stork. This is a beautifully animated short movie based on the story of Caliph Stork by William Hoff. And this story follows a young pleasure-seeking Caliph who finds himself transformed into his favorite animal, the Stork. With dark psychedelic imagery and themes of animal abuse and hedonism, this one became an instant classic for me as a child. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite war films of all time, The Dawn's Here Are Quiet. Now, this movie is fairly simple with minimal gore and violence, and yet it so deeply expresses the pain and tragedy of war. And if you want well-written female characters, this is the movie. They all have different stories, but the motivation for all of the characters in this movie is the same, love, which is what unites us all as humans. Next is Deep Blue Sea, Light White Foam. Now, this is an animated short based on an Armenian folktale. And it's about a sea king wizard that is released from a bottle by a fisherman's son. Hilarity ensues with the slapstick anachronistic humor, trippy visuals, and an addictive theme song. <laughs> This cartoon is short, to the point, and pleasant. It definitely solidified my love for mermaids. I mean, just look at her. Icon. Now, coming up on fourth, we have The Girls, a romantic comedy. It follows a young culinary school graduate who is living and working as a chef in a logging camp. Now, she is the epitome of the perfect Soviet citizen. Cheery, happy to work, and of course, very happy to share. Orphaned during World War II, her social naivete and perhaps a more rural mindset gets her into some sticky situations. Now, my mother and I quote this movie all the time randomly, and I would love to quote it with you guys too, so definitely give it a watch. And finally, one of my absolute childhood favorites, The Dinosaur Mountain. Now, this is not an educational or scientific cartoon. It's more philosophical. I'd say the theme is the futility of existence. Now, I do not want to spoil this one, so definitely take the 10 minutes out of your day to go ahead and watch it. It's definitely one that I'll be showing to my future kids. Now, I think that's what I'm missing here living in the U.S. I can't reminisce with my peers about the, these nostalgic childhood pieces. I can't reminisce about the golden antelope or about the tale of the star boy. And conversely, they can't reminisce with me about the fourth Harry Potter movie or about, I don't know, Avatar The Last Airbender. Even though I have seen it now, it's not the same as watching it as a kid. So here I am sharing a piece of my childhood with you so that we can create this space to share these things. Now, what kind of media did you grow up on? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are a fellow immigrant kid, let me know if you found any of this relatable and let me know what kinds of things you used to watch. Now, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.